Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week we're going to talk about subwoofer surrounds and the misconceptions on a lost cone area from a large surround and displacement differences. So on this cone, it measures 12.6 inches, apex to apex. This is on a 15 inch cone. It's got a very wide surround, not particularly tall. It's found on uh, quite a few different subs. Uh, we would use this on a YOLO SPL version. The original Sundown Audio Nightshade version one uh, also used this cone, and there's a few other subs that I believe also use this cone. This would be something like you would find on our Low Baller 15, the Sundown Audio SA, the Sundown Audio ZV3, all have a very similar roll here, about the same size width, that kind of thing. This one measures 12.75 inches apex to apex. So there's not a whole lot of difference between these two, despite the fact that it looks much different. It looks like you would lose quite a bit uh, across here because this is so much wider, uh, but there's only 0.15 inches difference. Now this one is what Sundown Audio calls a mega roll surround. Uh, this is something that you would find on their uh, Team Neo, uh, the original Team Ferrite, ZV5, ZV4, uh, our Armagerd, Armagerd V2. Um, some YOLO musicals might have a similar role to that. Um, this is a 11.875 apex to apex. So there is a uh, substantial difference in this one. Uh, if you actually look at the cone area figures on these, this one is going to be 124.6 square inches. This one is 127.6 square inches. So just a couple square inches more. Now this one is 110.7 square inches. So there is a substantial difference uh, between those if you're just looking at raw numbers. Uh, so that is the argument on these is there is so much surround, you lose cone area, so it can't be as loud. Now we're going to look at a couple other factors that uh, you may not consider with all these. Um, so on this cone, the height is 19 millimeters. This cone, the height is 22 millimeters. And on this cone, the height is 42 millimeters. So while you do have less radiant surface area between this one and this one and this one are pretty close, this one actually has the ability to move more. Now these are only single direction measurements. So if you want the complete stroke to stroke, peak to peak uh, measurements, uh, you can just double that. But we're just going off of measurement figures on here. This does not include any other factors such as the coil length, the uh, top plate uh, height, or the size of the spiders or their ability to travel. These are just raw maximum cone numbers. So do not take these as one thing can move more than another because it's used on this or that. There are plenty of other factors. These are just the maximum limitations of the cone. So if we look at the actual displacement numbers, this one, we're looking at 93.2 cubic inches moving one direction. This one is 110.5 cubic inches, again, one direction. And this one is 183 cubic inches. So while this one does have less radiant cone area, it has nearly double the actual displacement capability of this cone. So you may not think that from looking at the surround width uh, alone, but we're talking about over double the displacement or just short of double the displacement. Um, so then this one will fill in a little bit of difference between these two. There's actually about 19% difference. So what does that mean in actual output capability? Well, between these two, since this one is around 19% larger, you're looking in the neighborhood of around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 dB louder, assuming everything else was exactly the same. That's just sheer displacement theoretical conditions. On this one, compared to here, we're talking double. 
double the displacement is going to be 3 dB theoretical gain. So that is the equivalent of keeping the same power, keeping the same everything else, and having two of these to get the displacement of one of these. So you can't always just look at, well, it has less cone area, so that doesn't work out. The actual displacement is significantly more, so you can get more output, even on the same power. Now, all of these things are assuming that you're actually moving to the absolute maximum capability of the cone, so you have to take all the other factors into consideration. But when you look at the raw data of these cones, when you're sacrificing a small amount of cone area, you can gain it back significantly with the amount of actual displacement. Now, if the surround was this wide uh, on this cone and it wasn't particularly tall, then yes, you would lose some of that benefit. But there is something to be said for having a taller surround that might be wider if the rest of the sub is capable of actually using that. Uh, so you can have a significant output difference, uh, particularly at low frequencies. Um, that's generally where these thrive uh, on the cones or on the subs that these cones are used. And there are various reasons for that. But that is one benefit that you can have here is you can get a lot more displacement at lower frequencies that you may not be able to get out of some of these cones given the circumstance of the enclosure and the installation. If you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit a thumbs up if you like this video and hit that notification bell so you can get notifications every time we upload a new video on Tuesdays. Make sure you browse our website, www.emfcaraudio.com. We have Excess Power, EMF Audio Labs, Audio Control, SBC, Sundown Audio, all that stuff 24 seven on our website. So make sure you give that a browse and we'll see you again on another Tech Stuff Tuesday.